Hello fellow Rosarians, thank you for joining me today. I have an unboxing from a vendor that I haven't bought from yet. This is primarily a, um, a cut flower vendor, I think. I reached out to ask them if this was going to be own root or grafted, and I'm thinking that it might be a new vendor because they weren't really versed in root stocks. And they ju their response was, I buy from Weeks and, and Star. I think that's what they said. I buy from Weeks and Star, but they still didn't tell me what the root stock was. So maybe they didn't realize that that is something that people like to know. And I put it on my tags. You know, it'll say whether it's Dr. Huey or own root. Um, so maybe I'll be able to tell uh, when I get in here. But you need to keep in mind when you're buying from vendors that a lot of the vendors don't propagate on site. So when we think about people who propagate on site, that would be like um, Antique Rose Emporium, A Reverence for Roses, High Country. They are making their own roses on site. But then you have some vendors that are just buying from Weeks and Star and they're a distributor for the wholesaler. That would be, who else is um, like Menagerie? Um, they are a distributor. Um, a Life and Roses, a distributor. So just be aware, um, it's okay. Regan is a distributor. Palatine buds and grows on site. Okay, so, oh, this is a cute little bag that says, while I'm opening this, what do we look for when we are unboxing a bare root rose? We look to see that we got the variety that we wanted, the grade that we wanted, and I think this is a grade one, which means three canes the size of a pencil. Um, I'll check and see if I can tell if it's grafted or own root um, because the vendor was not sure. And then you're also looking to make sure that the canes are green and that there's no growth and that it remained moist in shipment. Ah. <laughs> so here we are. I've got my tag. I'll tell you about this in a second. Thank you so much for purchasing roses from our, our farm collect, farm's collection. By purchasing from our farm, you are helping us to grow. We are so grateful for your support. We hope you enjoy your roses as much as we do. So it is really nice to support small businesses. All right, so let's look at what they say before I get into this unboxing to see if they say anything that's different than what I, um, I do for my roses. They're going to ask that you soak the roots for 20, 12 to 24 hours, um, six inches a uh, <laughs> Six hours of direct sunlight, we know that. Um, they're asking that you amend the soil with a third of high quality compost and two thirds of native soil. So excellent that they're saying to use your native soil. That's really important. Um, do not use synthetic fertilizer in the hole. We're off to a good start. I'm hoping that um, I agree with that as an organic gardener. I don't use a synthetic. I'm using Biotone, uh, which is organic. They're saying to put the bud union two to three inches below ground. Um, and depending where we are in my yard, I have a very high water table. So sometimes I have to keep the crown just at soil level, maybe a little bit higher. They're saying to water your roses daily for one to two weeks. I would be... I don't do daily. I do, um, I would say weekly. Make sure that they're getting um, soaked through to the roots every week. But technically, they're still asleep and just, you know, they're starting to wake up. So unless you are already at, you know, 90 degree temperatures, you don't need to, my guidance is you don't need to water daily. Um, just watch it. Use your, uh, your water meter. That's going to be your friend in this case to make sure that it doesn't go down totally dry. Do not use any synthetic for one to two months. Um, okay. After the first bloom cycle. So they're recommending that you use organic for one to two months because it's gentle. All right. What else do we have in here? Grow something beautiful. A handwritten note. Thank you. Okay, um, let's go ahead and see what other pretty things I have in here. So I bought one rose to test them out, and we are off to a great start. It's in plastic, so I know that it has stayed moist through shipment. This is a really nice looking rose. I can tell already the size of it, and it is trying to wake up. 
Ooh, it got warm in shipment and it is trying to wake up. So we look for three canes the size of a pencil. Um, I definitely have five canes. My only concern is that I have, ooh. Uh, so I have a concern um, that we have a cut in this. Can you see how it's cut there in that cane? So it's cut in, Ugh. <laughs> cut in there. Um, so I might lose that cane because it's um, damaged. But then what brought my eye is that it looks like it has crown gall. If you look here, I have a growth that looks very cauliflower-like. Um, I'm not going to be able to put it in the ground, uh, and that makes me sad. Um, so I will send a picture to the vendor, um, but my hope through doing these videos is that you will learn what a healthy rose looks like, and then your eye will immediately see something that doesn't look quite right. In this case, I just can't put this, I can't take the chance of putting this into my garden um, and infecting the other roses. So I'm gonna take a picture of it, send it off to the vendor, vendor, and I'm sure that they will take care of this. That's sad. Okay, so let's talk about Honey Dijon really quick since you're here with me and you're dying to know. Honey Dijon is a week's rose. Let's take a step back a second. Can I be upset with a vendor when I have crown gall? And in this case, I can only be upset that they didn't know. And as I mentioned, they weren't even sure what the rootstock was. So um, maybe they're just new to roses. And um, when we talk about growing on site, you know, the high countries, Northland, um, the Antique Rose Emporium. So people who are propagating um, either with a root or they are uh, budding and grafting, they are responsible. Whoever owns the field is responsible for crown gall. In this case, this vendor doesn't have their own field and they told me that. They're just buying from a wholesaler and then, you know, they get it and send it off to you. So I can't necessarily be upset with them for crown gall. I can only be upset with them for not knowing and sending it out to me. So that's why it's important to know where to point the blame. Um, so anyways, when we talk about Honey Dijon, warm golden brown is the most uncommon color in roses, but we're certain Honey Dijon will quickly become a novel condiment in the rose world. Um, it's going to be a warm golden brown. It's going to, it's by Spruill. It doesn't have the, um, the height on this, but it's supposed to have a rich fruity fragrance. So let's look here real quick. It's going to be four foot by three foot suitable for zones five through ten it is a grade one rose this site did offer paypal um, but we won't go into that rack and stack i really hope that you enjoyed this video even though i'm not going to share the name of the vendor with you because i like to support small business and i think that um, that could be damaging to them uh, that the rose has gall. I do have more unboxings for you from companies that I haven't bought from and I'll be doing those in the coming weeks. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one.